Good morning. Uh, we are grateful to have the opportunity to share with you in what I like to call our Sunday School Lesson Preview Review of the lesson. The lesson dated for tomorrow, uh, Sunday, March 7th, as we give it to you uh, on today. Um, we want to uh, give honor and respect to the Pastor Emeritus of this to Mount Carmel Missionary Baptist Church, Dr. Joseph B. Felker, Jr., as well as to Sister Shirley Felker. Uh, all of the officers that make up the Mount Carmel Missionary Baptist Church, as well as the members, the great staff of our church school, uh, as well as our teachers, uh, and to our family and friends of Mount Carmel. We thank God for you sharing with us, and we hope and pray that you've been blessed and helped. And if you have, make sure that you let us know. Uh, type in something. Uh, let us know. Uh, uh, send us an email. Uh, let us know that you've been blessed and helped by what we share on today, because we thank God for your comments, of course, uh, but we just want to make absolutely sure uh, that we're helping all of those who we feel bound by God to help with these church school lessons. <clears throat> uh, today's lesson in the lesson in the standard lesson commentary is entitled Prophet of Deliverance, Prophet of Deliverance. Now, what I want you to do is to give me the Faith Pathways Quarterly title or the Internet title for today's lesson. Uh, you can type that in as I get ready to go through our devotional passage of Scripture and give our invocation. Then we'll have Sister Jones share the title uh, with everyone on today. Uh, our devotional reading is going to be coming from the 77th Psalm, verses 11 through 20. That's the 77th Psalm, verses 11 through 20. And as you're turning to that or looking that up, I want to make absolutely sure that I give honor and respect to our general superintendent of our church school, Sister Alice Jones as well as to the Youth Divisional Superintendent, who is also the Chair of our Deaconess Ministry, Sister Violet Crockett, uh, hoping and praying that your families and yourselves are doing well. Again, our devotional reading coming out of the 77th Psalm, verses 11 through 20. Uh, in the language of the New International Version, it reads like this. I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember your miracles of long ago. I will consider all your works and Meditate on all your mighty deeds. Your ways, God, are holy. What God is as great as our God? You are the God who performs miracles. You display your power among the peoples. With your mighty arm, you redeemed your people, the descendants of Jacob and Joseph. The waters saw you, God, and the waters saw you and writhed. The very depth were convulsed. The clouds poured down water. The heavens resounded with thunder. Your arrows flashed back and forth. Your thunder was heard in the whirlwind. Your lightning lit up the world. The earth trembled and quaked. Your path led through the sea. Your way through the mighty waters. Uh, though your footprints were not seen. You lead your people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. Amen. The 77th Psalm, verses 11 through 20. May the Lord have a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his word. And as I also love to say, the word of God for the people of God. Let's have our invocation now. Gracious God, we thank you for allowing us this opportunity to see another day, which we've never seen before. The health and strength that you've given us. Be with us now as we come together to share in the study of this word, the study of this lesson for this day. Be with those who have come on to share with us. Be with those who have desire to be with us and cannot. Master, we ask that you will continue to be with each and every one of us in every way that you see fit. These things we ask in thy son Jesus' name. Amen. All right. We want to uh, continue with our lesson for today and get ready to go with our key verse. Now, our key verse is a good one. I know. Now, there are some of our regulars that I know. I know you guys have it. And uh, that's going to be fantastic. Uh, but uh, it's uh, Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 15. I, mean, I know you know it by heart, but I'm going to read it for you here. The Lord your God will raise you, raise up for you a prophet like me from among you, from your fellow Israelites. You must listen to him. Amen. The word of God for the people of God. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among you, from your fellow Israelites. You must listen to them. Now, our printed lesson text, and I just want you to know that sometimes all of the lesson texts it's not in the quarterly. It may be today, but there are going to be some times when we're going to be using the standard lesson commentary and some of the titles are going to come out and uh, we're not going to get a chance to. Uh, but we'll go over those passages of scripture for you. 
So now, Sister Jones, anybody give us any titles? Okay, following true leaders, following true leaders. Okay, thank you all for that. I think that's it. Okay, very good. Now, as we get ready to introduce today's lesson, there are a couple of things that I want to share with you on today. First of all, I want to talk about Deuteronomy the book, and then I want to talk about Deuteronomy the word. Okay, first of all, Deuteronomy the book. The book is the fifth book of canonical uh, placed, uh, which means placed Jewish and Christian scripture containing narrative and mosaic laws. And you know, it's the fifth canon book in our scripture. And it has Jewish and Christian scriptures. We both uh, uh, accept uh, these passages of scripture uh, containing narrative, stuff that Moses said, stuff that is said by the people, as well as mosaic law, law that Moses was given by God to give to the people. Now, Deuteronomy, the word, the word translates the second given of the law. And this becomes very, very interesting because there are some things uh, that are repeated in Deuteronomy that are right out of Exodus, uh, including the commandments, uh, as well as some other things. And so it is it's considered the second given of the law. And this becomes important because this is uh, prior to the people getting ready to go into the promised land and establish themselves as a nation. OK, there's a, still a, a little ways coming before all of that comes into place. But uh, the first call, as well as the first responsibility, is always the call or responsibility to prepare. And God has Moses preparing the people as we take this passage of Scripture. Now, prior to our lesson text today, uh, which is actually the, uh, the, the verses that we're going to use in our lesson text today, uh, uh, in chapter 18, the book of Deuteronomy itself contains uh, instructions to prepare the people for their actions and their activities in the promised land, getting them ready for what they're going to do and how they're going to react and act and interact uh, in the promised lands. For instance, some of the things that are covered are provisions for the Levitical tribe. How are the Levites going to be taken care of by all the other tribes? What do they set in reference to all of the things that they will need to do as it relates to the worship aspects of the people of God? But then there's also within the book of Deuteronomy warnings against the evil and religious uh, and spiritual practices of those who are in the land, as well as those who possess the land around them. Now, for those of you that are Sunday school people. Bible study people, particularly Old Testament or Jewish writing people, you know, the children of Israel always got in trouble messing around with other folk doing other stuff. And one of the reasons why God would come down so hard on them is because, as my grandfather used to say, when you know better, you ought to do better. And so it is important for us to understand that God had Moses prepare the people for these challenges long, long before they even faced these challenges. <clears throat> even though we come to find out that they succumb to a number of them. But nevertheless, in this book of Deuteronomy, uh, Moses, again, would give warnings against the religious and the spiritual practices of those who are in the land that they're about to possess, as well as those that are in the lands that are surrounding them. And we know, uh, unfortunately, how some of that turned out later. Now, last thing I want to share with you as it relates to this introduction of framing up or crafting today's lesson is this. Moses declares in verse 15 of today's lesson two realities. The first reality is that he, Moses, is not only the lawgiver and the patriarch, but he's also the prophet. OK. And the second thing that Moses lets them know is that God is going to give the people another prophet like him, that the people must learn to listen and follow. OK, so there's two things in today's lesson that comes out of this one passage of scripture that Moses actually uh, lays on the people. He lets them know. He says, first of all, uh, let's make sure that you're perfectly clear about this. OK, not only am I the lawgiver. Yes, I am. Uh, not only am I the patriarch, I'm the lead father, I'm the chief father of, us, of this family of Israelites. Yes, I am. But I want you to know that I'm also a prophet of God. Amen. But not only that, uh, as I'm on the down, as I'm on the downside, as I'm getting ready to come to the end, when that end would come, I want you to know that God's going to give another prophet, Moses says, and that prophet's going to be just like him. OK. And the people must listen and follow. So it becomes important for us to understand the consistency 
of leadership is not the person in leadership. The consistency of leadership is the God who places them there. OK, did you get that? God continues to be the same God, even though through times and through years and through situations and circumstances, different people may be in place or places or positions of leadership. It's the same God that is the one that is placing them there. So that's where the consistency is. That's where the consistency of doing God's will, following God's people are. Amen. Now, let's get ready to go into the scriptures of today's lesson. And uh, the first part of today's lesson in the standard lesson commentary is entitled Authority. And it deals with uh, Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 15 through 18. I'm going to first start off with verse 15, which is under the category of raised up by the Lord. Verse 15, I read it for your hearing. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among you and your fellow Israelites. You must listen to him. Now, that was our key verse as well. Now, while Moses did not specifically identify who the prophet would be, he did offer some distinguishing characteristics. He made mention of the fact that he would be from among the people. He made mention of the fact that this prophet would be like him. And he also said that it's important that the people must listen to him, listen and follow his guidance and direction. OK, now it's important for us to understand, brothers and sisters, that it takes God himself through his already anointed and appointed leaders to show us the people among us who may become our leaders. Did you get that? I'm going to say it again. It takes God to create himself. And he does this through his already anointed and appointed leaders. And he uses them to show us the people who are among us uh, who would ultimately become uh, our leaders. OK, that's important for us to understand. Now, having said that, it is also just as important for us to know that this does not mean that the person or the people have a pass on whether or not they are godly. Even if they are the person for that position uh, in that location. OK, uh, the person still has to have a relationship with God. The person still has to be a person that God would have. It okay? can't be a person that folk hope God has or want God to have. Uh, remember, now it becomes important for us to understand that the person must be a godly person. There must be a connection between God's appointing and anointing and the person being in the position of leadership. Moses makes that perfectly clear in fewer words than I did uh, in the text. Now, so now, it means these words that God sees us and God sees those that are around us as we grow and as we allow ourselves to be led by him. So God, God knows uh, who among us or as he did among those people, who's going to be the leader, uh, regardless of what that particular position is, because God is watching each and every one of us. He's watching our ups and our downs. He's watching our obediences and our disobediences. He's watching all of this stuff that we're doing as it relates to who he is, as it relates to our relationship with him. And so it becomes very, very important that we are aware of that reality. Amen? Amen. Now, the next part of these particular passages of Scripture, verses 16, 17, and 18, goes under the category of requested by the people. Requested by the people. I'm going to read those verses for you. For this is what you asked of the Lord your God at Horeb, on the day of the assembly, when you said, let us not hear the voice of the Lord our God, nor see this great fire anymore, or we will die. Verse 17, the Lord said to me, what they say is good. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their fellow Israelites, and I will put my words in his mouth, and he will tell them everything I command him. Now, listen. There's a writer and philosopher by the name of uh, George uh, Sanatania. And what he said was these words, and these are somewhat familiar, even though they've been worked around. Those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. OK, it is just as true to say today that the mistakes of history will repeat themselves if we fail to remember them. 
OK, Moses reminds the people that there was a time when they did not want to hear directly from the voice of God. You know, he reminds them of the time when God was going to speak to them. Actually, God was going to give them the commandments and the precepts that he would later give to Moses. <clears throat> and as God was beginning to speak, the folk became so afraid. They said, Moses, you go up and talk to him. You know, we'll, we'll die if we continue to listen to him talk to us. And so Moses, again, makes perfectly clear. He reminds them. He said, don't forget now, you know, uh, you wanted God to speak to the prophet and the prophet to speak to you on God's behalf. You did not want to speak to God directly. And so he reminds them that. And not only that, as he reminds them of that, he lets them know that God has no problem with that. OK, God understood that, which is very good. OK, which takes us to the next category, the next larger category uh, of today's lesson, which is accountability. Now, this accountability will take us home. It takes us through Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 19 through 22. Uh, the first uh, level of accountability or the call to accountability that's in the scriptures here uh, is entitled Listen and Obey. And it is out of verse 19. Let me read verse 19 for you. I myself will call to account anyone who does not listen to my words that the prophet speaks in my name. Now, listen. The creator, God himself, in his loving kindness and tender mercies, sets the rules relative to the ones he will send to speak in his name. OK, it becomes important. And God is making that perfectly clear. He said, listen, I myself will call to account anyone who does not listen to the prophets who speaks in my name. There's going to be someone There's going to be prophets speaking in my name. OK. And when folk don't heed the words of the prophet speaking in my name, I'm going to hold them accountable to that. He goes on to say that the people ought to listen and the people ought to respond appropriately or there will be consequences brought by God himself. OK, it's important for us to understand that. OK, then it takes us to verse 20, which is entitled in the category of the standard lesson commentary uh, to punish false prophets. Verse 20, uh, it becomes uh, important for us uh, to understand that uh, uh, that passage uh, that is in there is, is very, very, very important uh, for us to understand because it shows us in and of itself the, uh, the accountability that is expected by a creator, which goes both ways. You see, what comes out of verse 20 is the reality that uh, God not only holds the, how can I say it, uh, the hearers of his message accountable. Uh, he holds those that call themselves or the who he chooses to be the speakers of his truth. And so it's important for us to when we look at a verse like verse 20 to say that, man, I thank God for grace and mercy of our own dispensation. OK, because there were those who did not speak or teach God's word or give God's message while calling themselves a prophet of God were to be put to death. I mean, he literally said anybody that is not doing this should be put to death. And I mean, and so I'm thank God for his grace and mercy. Uh, can you imagine what that what a word with the word with that passage in his truth and reality without grace and mercy would look like in this country today? OK, it becomes important for us to understand that and thank God for his grace and mercy. And then we have verses uh, 21 and 22, uh, which takes us out uh, of uh, today's lesson. Uh, and verse 21 and 22 reads like this. You may say to yourselves, how can we know when a message has not been spoken by the Lord? If what a prophet proclaims in the name of the Lord does not take place or come true, that is the message that the Lord has not spoken. That prophet has spoken presumptuously. So do not be alarmed. OK, brothers and sisters, it's important for us to recognize uh, in today's lesson and these passages as well, talking about testing any claim that you cannot know a false message from the Lord if you don't know the Lord. OK, this is this is the kind of stuff that gets uh, people in Waco, Texas movement in trouble. This is the kind of stuff that gets people in Guyana movement in trouble. Whether the name is a David Koresh or whether the name is a Jim Jones or anyone in between, if you don't know the Lord and someone says they're speaking the word of the Lord, if you don't know any better, if you're not careful, you find yourself following them, thinking that you're doing God's will. Now, uh, it becomes important for us to realize just as much 
that you cannot know a wrong teaching or an expression of the word of God if you don't know the word of God. So it's not only important for us to know who the Lord is by our life of praying to him, by our life of watching how he has worked in the lives of ourselves and others, as well as our study uh, through the word of God and our being taught the word of God and our being preached the word of God. But it's also important for us to study the word of God for ourselves and allow the word to go through us, because if we do not, we can find ourselves susceptible to messages that are not from God, but they're spoken by people. Some examples of the are, is, are these. The world is going to end on Friday the 13th. OK, there are people that say that kind of stuff all the time. The world's been coming to an end, according to some of these false prophets and misdirected teachers and non word centered teachers and, and preachers for years. But yet and still, we're still here. There's also been those who have felt that they can calculate the weeks of the book of Daniel, along with the words and prophecies of out of the book of Revelation. And they take it and add all that stuff together and they can tell the day that Jesus is going to return. But remember, in the word of God, Jesus says no man knows the day or the hour. Jesus said that he don't even know he's the son of God. OK, so it becomes important for us to know. But yet and still, there are individuals that will tell us that they can calculate the weeks of Daniel's dream and they can calculate uh, the, the words that are in the book of Revelation. They can come up with the day. No, they can't. OK. And one that we just recently experienced uh, is this one, that Donald Trump will be placed back into office of president on March 4th, 2021. There were people that believed that. There were people that taught that. There were people that were teaching that and sharing that. And nothing could be farther from the truth. But if you don't know the Lord and if you don't know the word of God, these kind of things can guide or misguide or direct or misdirect your lives. So it becomes important for us to understand that. Now, as we wrap up today in conclusion, I want to share these words for you. First thing is this. God always has a plan and a person for the future of his people. God does not leave us leaderless in our future. God always has a plan and God always has a person. And so that's important for us to understand. The next thing I want you to realize in conclusion of this lesson is this one. We must be sure, we must be sure, brothers and sisters, to learn as much of the word of God that we can so that we will not be deceived. Okay? The Bible tells us, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that need not be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. You can't rightly divide the word of truth if you don't correctly study the word. Amen. And then the last thing I want to leave with you is this. We should always seek God's guidance as we do his will and live his ways as taught and preached by the men and women that he calls and assigns to ministry and leadership. That's very important for us to wrap our brains around. We should always seek the guidance of God so that we can do his will and live his ways as these things are taught to us and preached to us by men and women that God calls and God assigns to positions of ministry and leadership. Well, brothers and sisters, we hope that you've been blessed and helped by the day. Uh, we look forward to sharing with you uh, on tomorrow at 11 o'clock in our worship. We want you to know that we will, have a, we will be having Holy Communion on tomorrow as well. And we do uh, ask that you would join us. Uh, we do have sacrament here at the church if you'd like to pick it up. Uh, but we also know that if you've already picked it up and if you can't, uh, you can use elements that you may have at home. If you have cracker at home and if you have some grape juice at home uh, and, and just remember this, uh, we're still in the middle of this pandemic, even though there are people running around acting like we're not anymore. And if you can't get out like you would like or get some of those things, understand that God knows where we are in the midst of all of this. Uh, we look forward to that great, grand and glorious time when we'll get a chance to all be together. Uh, in our church school as well as in our worship. But until then, we'll continue to pray for your health and praying for your safety. May God continually truly bless you and may keep you. Sister Jones, again, thank you for sharing with us. We invite you to say good morning to everyone. Good morning, everybody. So until we see you again, hopefully on tomorrow at 11 o'clock on this same platform, take care and God bless.